Hello friends, it's Mrs. Villa and I'm back for another read aloud with you. Earlier this week, I read Helen Keller and the Big Storm uh, to you and what I'd like to read to you now is another wonderful story that has connections to Helen Keller and the Big Storm. This story is called Six Dots and it's a story of young Louis Braille and this book has just wonderful connections because we learned that in Helen Keller in the big storm the challenges that Helen faced being blind and deaf and how she was able to overcome those challenges and in six dots uh, you're going to learn about uh, the way that blind people um, started their communication with the braille system and Louis Braille is actually um, one of the people that greatly contributed to that effort. So Six Dots, a story of young Louis Braille. Now Mrs. Villa had to look up some French words and how to pronounce them because there's a lot of French in here because um, Louis was not from the United States. So excuse me if I mispronounce something. I love that in the beginning of the story they actually show us the Braille alphabet and it's so awesome how they show us like the different cells and how you can um, read the Braille alphabet. So if it's something you're interested in, maybe it's something you can look more into with mom and dad. It's wonderful. Okay. Okay. On the day I was born, Papa announced me to the village. Here is my son, Louis. The neighbors came, clucking their tongues, whispering, too small, he won't survive. Oh, but I did survive. I was a curious child and my eyes studied everything. My man's gentle face, lace draping my cradle, the smooth shape of bread loaf on the table, I grew strong and healthy. When I rode to the bakers on my brother's broad shoulders or fed the chickens with my sisters, the villagers waved and smiled. So handsome, they cried. And clever too, my sisters said. At three, I knew everyone in Couvray, everyone by name. I counted the eggs in my sister's basket and the sparrows in the trees. I repeated stories I heard word for word. Wow, so we're learning that Louis was a very clever or smart young boy. He was doing all that at only the age of three years old. Wow. But what I loved the most was to watch Papa work. People came from far away to have a harness made or a broken brittle mended. In Papa's hands, the rough leather strips became smooth and useful. I wanted to be just like him. But when I reached for a tool, ne touche pas. Don't touch that, Papa warned. Then more gently, you're too small yet, Louis. Wait till you're older. Too small? Oh, those words. I wanted to be bigger, stronger, older. Perhaps if I showed Papa what I could do. The leather was smooth. The awl was sharp. I knew just how to. <gasps> Papa! 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 Wow, look how the author shows us that Louis yelling. Papa! What do you guys think happened? My life changed that day. A healer, like a doctor back you would say almost, a healer bandaged my eye. Again, I heard, ne touche pas, don't touch. But the bandage itched so much. My hands, like the sparrows in the trees, were small and quick. 
I couldn't keep them away. I didn't mean to make things worse, but I did. The infection spread to my other eye. So it started off just in one eye, guys, but because he kept scratching and playing with it, he said he couldn't help it. It went from one of his eyes to the other until I could see nothing at all. No trees or sparrows, no faces, no lace or loaves of bread. By the time I turned five, I was completely blind. The villagers whispered, poor Louis Braille, such a clever boy. What will happen to him now? My world was dark and dangerous. I stumbled about the house, banging into the chairs, the walls, the door. My body ached. Where is the sun? I cried. Wow, guys, can you imagine that? All of a sudden losing your sight. He was able to see all the way up until he was five. Had to be really scary. But the sun did not come. I sat by the window, training my ears to do what my eyes could not. Clang, bang, ksh, ksh. That was Papa in his shop. Swoosh, swish, swoosh, swish. Long skirted ladies hurrying to market. Clomp, 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 clomp. Soldiers marching down the street. Grrr, ruff, ruff, grrr. The neighbor's angry dog chained too tight. Alone in the dark, I knew just how he felt. So let's think about now that Louis doesn't have his sense of sight, how important it is that his sense of hearing is kicking in. He's really relying on that. My family did what they could. Papa made a wooden cane. Each day I walked a little farther. Tap, 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 tap. Counting the steps between the house and the garden. The vineyard and the chicken coop. The bakers and the millers. And back to Papa's shop. And I want you to think about this and maybe talk about it with someone at home. Why do you think Louis would be counting the steps from one place till the next? It's a really good question to think about. Why would he be counting the taps that he makes with his cane? Think about that. My brother taught me to whistle, wee, wee, wee. And when the sound echoed back, it warned me of things in my path. My sisters made a straw alphabet. Papa made letters with leather strips or by pounding round topped nails into boards. With my men, I played dominoes, counting the dots with my fingertips. I wonder if any of you have dominoes at home. The village priest taught me to recognize trees by their touch, flowers by their scent, and birds by their song. I listened closely as he read to me from the Bible and from books of poetry. Do you have books for blind children? I asked. No, Louis, the priest replied. I'm sorry. When I was older, I went to school with the other village children. All day they wrote down words and numbers or read out loud from printed pages. I sat in the front row listening and memorizing. Do you have books for blind children? I asked again. No, Louis, the teacher replied. I'm sorry. 
but I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. I just wanted to read and to write on my own like everyone else. Here's another French word, okay. Marquise. The Marquise, a noble lady living nearby, heard about me. She wrote a letter to the Royal School for the Blind, asking if I could study there. Finally, a reply came. Bienvenue. Welcome, Louis. The priest says they have books for the blind, I told Papa excitedly. But you're only 10, Maman cried. And you'll live there most of the year, my brother added. Paris is a big city far away, my sisters warned. How could I make them understand? Without books, I would always be poor Louis Braille. I would always be held back like that dog chained too tight. I love you, I told them, but I must go. Wow, 10 years old, guys. So at about 10 years old, think about what grade you're in. Probably third or fourth grade at 10, and he wants to go away to school. That's how badly he wants to read and write and learn. Wow. I didn't need my eyes to know that the Royal School in Paris was not a palace. My bed was in a damp, crowded room. My uniform itched. My meals were small and cold. The teachers were strict. The older boys teased and stole. Oh, how I missed my home. And yet, I stayed. I stayed because somewhere in this old, moldy building, there were books for the blind. Only the best students are allowed to read them, my friend Gabrielle told me. Then I will be one of the best, I replied. Learning at the blind school was almost like learning in couvre. We sat and listened. We memorized and recited. We also had music lessons and made slippers in the workshop. As my fingers flew across the organ keys or between strips of cloth, I dreamed of reading and writing. It was that day. A guide led me to the library. Assez à vous ici. Sit here, he commanded. There was shuffling, grunting, and scraping. A thud. Voila. There it is, he said. Just trace the raised letters with your fingers. It was a long reach to the top of page one. My fingers traced the outline of each letter, just as I'd done in couvre, with straw and leather. But these waxy letters were huge. After reading the first sentence this way, my hand was halfway down the page. A few sentences more, and I had to turn the page. A few sentences more, Two more pages, and then the end. Here's another tricky French word for Mrs. Villa. Let's see if I... Si es tu? Is that all? I asked. There are more, the guide replied, but they're just like this one. Words as large as my hand. Sentences that took up half a page. I sighed. <sighs> Even if I read a hundred books like this, how much could I learn? So why do you think Louis thinking like that? They said in the Braille book, guys, that he was reading, one sentence would take up half a page. That's, that's a lot, right? That means that's got to be a long sentence or a lot for him to figure out for each letter. Let's see what he does. 
I skipped supper. I lay in bed wishing I was home. When I finally fell asleep, I dreamed that the neighbor's angry dog broke free. He ran to me, licking my face until I laughed and laughed. Louis, Louis, Leveto, I get up. Gabrielle shook me awake. It was the morning. The headmaster wants us. Guys, the headmaster would be like the principal, okay? Let's go. Allons. Everyone had gathered in the big room. Dr. Pinier spoke. A French army captain has invented a code to send secret messages during battle. The code is to read by touch, not sight. So we might use it here too. You're each holding a message written with patterns of dots. The headmaster continued, each pattern stands for a sound, such as O-U, U or I-N, in or C-H. We listened as he explained. It wasn't easy. There was a lot to remember. Flipping my paper over, I moved my fingers from left to right, feeling the dots. Fall back, I shouted. Everyone laughed. It was a battle order, of course, but now my heart pounded with hope. I asked for another. Again, I touched the dots. Supplies arrive at dawn. We, oui, yes, the headmaster cried. The others shouted out their messages too. So guys, what's happening here? We learned that on this other page that a French army captain, just think about like an, an army officer, okay? They wanted to have secret codes so um, the bad guys or other people wouldn't be able to understand them. So they came up with messages where you couldn't just read them with your eyes. You had to touch them. So then they thought it would be a good way to help teach the people at the blind school also learn how to read. So the kids are so excited. Ooh, we, oui, yes, the headmaster cried. The others shouted their, out their messages too because they're starting to understand it. How are the messages written, I asked. The headmaster handed me a slate, a wooden frame with a metal piece in the middle. Slide your paper underneath, he explained. Now take this stylus, but be careful. This is what he's um, talking about with the stylus, this tool right here. Okay. The sharp tool was like the all in Papa's shop. I shivered. Just remember what happened to his eye when he was playing with his daddy's tools? That's why he shivered. Use it to punch the code into the paper, he said. I made a few of the complicated dot patterns, then flipped the paper to read them by touch. For many weeks I practiced. Reading by touch using dots was a brilliant idea, at least on the battlefield. But for us, the code was so hard that everyone else in the school had given up. Because we got, guys, we have to remember on the battlefield, those are older, at this time, older men and they're adults, right? Okay, and they already know how to read by sight. And so they're learning a special code for war. Now, these children, this is their only means to read. And so some of them, because it was so difficult, just gave up. That's what Louis is saying. Even a short message takes so many dots. And I can't fit a single symbol under my finger. I complained to Gabrielle. Plus, the captain's code stands for sounds, not letters. So what? My friend replied. So, why shouldn't we spell words and write sentences like sighted people do? I argued. This code was a start, but it wasn't nearly good enough. We, the blind, were still held back. Would the captain work on improving it with me? I asked the headmaster. I'm sorry, Louis. He isn't interested. 
he replied. Sorry? Oh, that word. Everyone kept telling him they were sorry they didn't have books he could read back at home. And now his headmaster is sorry that they don't want to meet with him to help change the code. Long ago, I had watched Papa take rough leather strips and make them useful. Now I knew what I had to do. Late at night, while the others slept, I bent over my slate and punched the pages. I tried hundreds of ways to simplify the captain's code. That means to make it easier. I worked until my back was stiff and my fingers ached. Often, I fell asleep a few minutes before morning. A year passed, then another, and another. That winter, I turned 15. I was often sick, but I wouldn't rest. Why do you think he wouldn't rest? Hmm. Finally, it was ready to test. I asked the headmaster to choose something from his own library, a book I'd never heard of before. Please read it out loud, I said. Dr. Pinier began. After a few minutes, I interrupted. You can go much faster, sir. As he read, I copied down the words, spelling each one correctly. My new code just used six dots, arranged in two columns like dominoes. Each dot pattern stood for a letter of the alphabet. Fini said Dr. Pinier when he reached the end of chapter one. Finished! I turned my pages over. Reading by touch, I recited the entire chapter. Louis, tu la fait! You did it! He shouted. Word spread quickly. The other students rushed to try it. Si facile, so easy, si vite, and so fast. We can read words and write letters like everyone else. As my friends traded messages, I, remem I remembered watching Papa in his shop, bent over rough strips of leather, making them useful. I had become like him after all. Wow, guys. What an inspiration. All the other kids wanted to give up because the code that they learned from the general was too hard. And Louis spent years trying to make the code easier so everyone could read. Isn't that amazing? Then at the end again, they show us the Braille alphabet. And remember, he said it kind of looked like a domino, right? Can you guys see how that looks like? Those, I believe they're called cells, how it looks like they're dominoes. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, the Braille alphabet. So I want you to think about now the connections between Louis Braille and Helen Keller. And one of the things that you can do at home is you can talk about Helen Keller and Louis Braille with someone at home and compare and contrast them, talking about their uh, likenesses and their differences. And, a, and an awesome tool you can use for that is something called a Venn diagram. And I know this is very familiar to us. So you'll see one side I have Louis Braille, and then on the other side I have Helen Keller. So I made mine two different colors, blue for Louis, and I made Helen's side red. And you just write little bullets in there. So what's something we could think about Louie that's not the same with Helen? Well, when I think, I think, okay, Louie's a boy. And what was Helen? Yeah, obviously she is a girl. Now, another um, difference between Louie and Helen, Louie lost sight 
as young child because when he was a young child around five that's when he lost his sight remember when the infection went from one eye to the other and when Helen lost her sight she was I believe she was between a year and 18 months old so we're gonna put young toddler okay and what you can do is you can either go back and listen to Helen Keller and the Big Storm Read Aloud and Louis Braille and you can write down the things that are different about them and then this is I think going to be the most important part and the most exciting part to see the connections. What are some things that you can think of that are the same about Louis Braille and Helen Keller and then just write a couple of bullet points there. So I really hope you enjoyed that story. It's just so wonderful to see how um, the Braille alphabet came about. And I will be posting another read aloud soon. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, guys.